I was told you'd enjoy this. What if we kiss in the autism awareness police car? I don't know how to feel. My husband, who's going through a bit of a Reddit phase at the moment, told me about a subreddit called Evil Autism and uh, naturally I was intrigued. So I've got these devil horns down from my cupboard and I'm gonna go into the subreddit and we're gonna react and I, I don't really have any idea what it actually is. But let's see what we find in here. Are we evil? Let's find out today. Okay, this looks like it's some sort of video. Man hits train in Braxton, CA. What? Work. Report first, ask questions later. And we have a tragic story now out of Braxton, California this hour. A 23-year-old man was tragically killed this morning by a train when he jumped under the- Okay, it's not real, it's a parody news thing. Good, because I saw the title and I was a bit like, mm, what's this gonna be? Tracks to retrieve a woman's purse. Autistic reporter Michael Falk has the story. I have the story. I've seen this guy, I've seen this autistic reports and parody, I've seen some of them on YouTube, they're really funny and there's a lot of autistic people in the comments like, why is this like the best representation? <laughs> at 4.05 p.m., a 100,000 pound Comet Liner 2 stainless steel car ran into a man at the Braxton station. Luckily, there was no structural damage caused- I love him knowing every little detail about the train. Car's chassis, so it was only a matter of cleaning the train to remove the human debris and return it to a pristine state. Oh, just a terrible accident, Michael. No, Brooke. This was a very lucky day for the train. If it had been hit by something- So the train was fine, don't worry, he's more concerned about the train than the person, okay. ...bigger like a car or a boulder or a large animal that could have been dented. Okay, do you know anything about the man that the train- <laughs> They could have been dented in the star of the space. I like it, I mean, I do feel like there's potentially the slight air of like autistic people don't have empathy. Of course, he's gonna care more about the inanimate object than the human, which I don't feel like most autistic people would feel like that. I think empathy varies from person to person, regardless of whether you're autistic. It's just that autistic people might express empathy differently. I suppose if he's very, very passionate about the trains, that may have been a big concern, but I feel like most autistic people would probably be quite traumatized by seeing somebody hit by a train, as anybody would. I do understand this is this is a joke. Train hit Miguel Laviera. He's dead now, Brooke. The train, because of its Westinghouse Ecam XCA 448F propulsion system, requires a minimum stopping distance of 625 feet. Yeah, him saying he's dead, bluntly saying he's dead. That could sound like a not very caring way to respond. And I mean, in this joke, you know, the guy's already said it's not bad because the train's okay, kind of thing. That doesn't necessarily mean you're not upset by somebody dying. It's just the truth. Oh, they're dead. Euphemisms like they passed away and, you know, they're in a different place now and stuff like that. They might not really resonate with autistic people and they might just kind of say it how it is or certainly is the way that my, a lot of my family members communicate before the train came to a complete stop it ran over a th and it can just kind of come across as a bit of a like dark humor sometimes three trash bags a piece of gum a snickers wrapper a man in a glove it's just terrible now i understand that the platform was packed with commuters at the time of the accident yes that cameraman told me to talk to the people who saw the train get hit here's what they said are you angry because your train ride is over no i didn't even get on a train well, don't worry. Once the blood and flesh is hosed off the car, you will be able to ride the train again. Who are you? I'm Michael Falk of the Onion News Network. Nice to meet you. Uh, now, Michael, it doesn't seem that the conductor is at fault, but will there be any kind of investigation oh, into oh, actually oh. what happened and oh, how he handled it? Uh, I talked to the conductor. You drive the train. Yeah, this is uh, the sort of thing that every train operates. I want to drive the train. What? Can we go on the train now and drive it? No, I don't think we're going to be driving that train tonight. Why? Is there something wrong with the train? I thought that you said that the train was all right. What's wrong with the train? The train is fine, but a person is dead. The train is fine. Yes. And a person is dead. I like this was kind of like a laughing at the stereotype of autistic people being obsessed with trains. If it's kind of like a laughing with us kind of thing, it's like taking it to an extreme to the point where that would be all you would care about. The train is fine. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Uh, it's now time for business news. <laughs> <came> out, yes. <laughs> that loud out place, yes. 
I always used to find the transitions on the news weird anyway, just awful despair things coming on that are like unbearable to listen to and then it suddenly switches over to like sport and now we're talking in a little bit more of an upbeat voice about this score and this team and da da da. I always found that a little bit of like a jarring transition. I don't really know how to feel about that. I understand it's you know taking the obsession with trains to an extreme. Is the person who plays that character, is he actually autistic himself? I don't know. I feel like yeah maybe doesn't do a lot of good necessarily for the stereotype of autistic people. We're on an edgy reddit here. Someone put Michael Falk, my beloved. Someone said these are absolute gold. Then someone said when someone dies but they were killed by your special interest. <laughs> then someone replied no the train is still alive. Okay, it's probably offensive, someone said, but I still laughed and then someone replied, it's evil. Okay, we know where we are now. We've got, we've read the room a little bit. <laughs> it's from around 2012, apparently. Okay, let's see what else we got. It says, fastest diagnosis in history. My boyfriend is wearing a f***ing suit to his autism diagnosis appointment. No. <laughs> oh my gosh. If you're a guy and you're worried about not being taken seriously to go for a diagnosis late in life, wear a suit. That's, that's my advice. I don't know what the most stereotypically female equivalent would be. I suppose you could also wear a suit. Maybe that would help because maybe they see you as more masculine and if they're very stereotypical they might, you know, see autism as more of a masculine thing and it might, you know, make them make the right connections on the day. I don't know. Wear suits, guys. That's the tip. Yeah, there is a bit of a thing about autistic people wanting to look polished. Is it about us kind of wanting to do the right thing and perfectionism? Or is it because we get told at some point that suits are smart and I don't know, we latch onto it? I don't know what it is. I had a thing of always kind of feeling like I wanted to look polished and I would overdress for things often. I went through a phase. I wouldn't really be seen out of the house in t-shirts or sweatpants and I had a big thing against them. Someone said, oh my god, I wore a every day to high school and brought an attaché case instead of a backpack. One of the most important days in the life of an autistic, of course he does. We had a guy at our college when we were in Lewis college who wore a suit every day. I don't, I don't want to diagnose anyone, but like, could be? Could not be. We don't know. It's time for drastic measures. No eye contact penalty, 200 pounds. What is that from? It's 200 pounds, so it's England. What is that from? What is that from? Is that real? Has someone edited that? It looks kind of blurred, like someone's moved the camera. That looks legit. What is it from? <laughs> Neurotypicals would make it a f***ing protest at staring contest. <laughs> The revolution has begun, someone said. Oh my god, I love this. I love the comments. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, imagine if it was socially inappropriate to make eye contact. I wonder, is that is that the case for any cultures? What we find socially acceptable is not necessarily the right way to be. There isn't anything inherently negative about not making eye contact with somebody. It doesn't hurt someone to not make eye contact with them. I was told you'd enjoy this. What if we kiss in the autism awareness police car? <laughs> I don't know how to feel <laughs> with the like the face. I don't I don't know how to feel. That is a dreadful car with all those puzzle pieces. Most autistic people would not be a fan of that vehicle. Someone said, what if we kissed while destroying the autism awareness police car? Someone replied, would that be a date? Kill it with fire. I don't like the police being aware of us. <laughs> People are so quick and so clever. Oh my god. They should be aware of us, yeah. Increased scrutiny could bring the great autism conspiracy into peril. It may be safest to detonate the underwater lair, mind wipe everyone and start over. Someone said, would that be a date? Then someone said, can I be the awkward third wheel? And then someone replied and said, you're not the awkward third wheel when all the wheels are awkward. No, this is amazing. Okay, I've got a link to a news article as well. Thanks, we hate it. Autistic people react to Miami's new police car. The colors are so bad, like taking everything out and all the connotations. The colors are just so offensive. And I've said this before in the reaction video I did to autism awareness meme. I'm just like everybody else, dot dot, only different. I'm just like everybody else, only different. So you're different. I'm lost. If you haven't seen that one, I react to loads of these like autism parent sort of memes that are like 
my child has a superpower and is an angel but they were all just so weird garish like just strange colors and templates used and images that made no sense there was like a remembrance poppy on something for no reason it was so chaotic and all over the place and yeah this just has that vibes it's not sensory friendly to just stink a stick a bunch of stink stink a bunch of loud colors together like just calm down. So they unveiled an autism awareness wrap on one of their squad cars. It's bright, it's shiny, it has puzzle pieces and it came with it. Oh no, it came with a big check made out to Autism Speaks. No! Puts on David Attenborough voice. Here we have neurotypicals wanting to be- I'm not going to do a David Attenborough voice. Wanting to be a saviour for the autistic community without including autistic people in the conversation. The neurotypical offends the autistics by using puzzle pieces and bright colours that hurt their eyes. Wasn't just me! It hurts your eyes, I'm telling you! It's here, our autism awareness vehicle. We'll be patrolling the streets of Miami. If you see it, say hi, take a picture, tag us. Neurotypicals doing a design, a visual horror story. Someone replied, seriously, I can't even look at it right now. It causes me physical pain. Oh no. Yeah, it says that the design seems to be conceived by someone who has never met an autistic person. Yeah, this is really offensive. I'm really funny with colours as anyone else. Like whenever I open my wardrobe throughout basically my whole life, there are colours that I like and that I will wear. Red is a nice colour for me. I like a bit of red, like a bit of purple. Largely black and white when you open my wardrobe. Just some colours are just like no for me and it doesn't really change. It doesn't really have seasons. It's just like this is the palette that I will accept and this is not and it's it's just the way it is. I used to get so mad in summer when all the summer clothes came out at like Topshop and wherever I went shopping back in the day. Everything would be so bright and floral and I was just like, oh, calm down. <laughs> just turn everything black. <laughs> to a few of us, these colors may seem fun and stimmy. You have never stimmed. <laughs> but in the vast majority of autistic people, this god quaff looks like a unicorn vomited the entire, the entire 1990s. I was gonna say, don't insult unicorns like that, but when they added the 1990s, I got it. It's that green that makes me want to rip my eyeballs out to stop the pain. Here's a brief list of everything that makes the car's paint job an abomination onto autistic brains. That yellow, that green, that pink, the lack of symmetry with the puzzle pieces, scattered haphazardly everywhere. Honestly, it looks like the worst children's toy you've ever seen in your life. Erasing and infantilizing. Ableism and racism that happens at the hands of the police with a political PR stunt that makes police seem less intimidating. The word autism is crooked. The word awareness is barely legible. And the R is having some kind of personal crisis so it really seems to read a wasteness. <laughs> Miami is a sunny place so the car will be frequently in very bright light. This is basically a mobile migraine. <laughs> Seriously, what kind of puzzle is this? Have you never done a puzzle? If a puzzle piece is a totally different color from the piece you're connected to, something is wrong. Look at the box, neurotypicals. Most of us hate the puzzle piece symbol because we associate both it and autism speak with attitudes that have resulted in our persecution and mistreatment. In fact, this entire car and political stunt seems to be a shining beacon of miseducation and misunderstanding. If your puzzle looks like a jumbled up Rubik's cube, you've done it wrong. Love autistic people. Someone said co-signing this as an autistic epileptic. <laughs> Here comes the sensory distress mobile to slaughter more innocents. <gasps> No! It's a visual representation of how this car might look to an autistic version in sensory overload. At first I didn't even realise it had anything on it. Like that is literally just how it looks. <laughs> Someone's called a crumb bum. I had no idea people with autism were infants. I hate puzzles. But by the way, boring. Yeah, that was that was a mess. How to handle public invites. Mom says no. Hey mom, can Britney sleep over tonight? Just say no. No. Okay. <laughs> so they're gonna delete some of the messages. Hey mom, can Britney sleep over tonight? Then it would just say no. <laughs> just no bluntly. Oh dear. I feel like uh, my mom would have done that for me as well. She did help me get out of uh, things. I hate self-diagnosis. I hate it when people tell me I'm neurotypical. Um, did you get diagnosed? <laughs> No! <laughs> I've said this before, I've said this before. Come back to me when you've gotten evaluated by a professional because you know, you know, there are so many undiagnosed neurodivergent people who think they're neurotypical stomping around the earth, you know? And, and they're there questioning your diagnosis and you're like, mate, mate, have you checked yourself first? Maybe. How do you know that you're neurotypical? 
Come back to me when you've got an evaluated by a professional. Everyone is claiming to be holistic nowadays, which means not autistic. It's such a trend. Like you just made that up to avoid attention. <laughs> that was me, me when I was masking as a teenager. I'm neurotypical. Oh, you can't know that you're neurotypical if you haven't been diagnosed by a doctor. We laugh, but it is true. And you also can't know that you don't have a mental health condition if you haven't been assessed by a doctor, you know? Because sometimes people argue like, um, you can't self-diagnose as autistic because you could actually just have a mental health problem and it's like, okay, well, so could any other neurotypical person on the street. Should there be obligatory mental health screening? Perhaps, I think most people could do with some help with their mental health. I think that is a fact. And yes, it is true that autistic people are probably more likely to need some support with their mental health, for sure. Claiming you're autistic without a diagnosis is insulting to those who have been diagnosed with allism. Allism, allism. Allism. True, very true. When I first read the title, I was upset. But now I know you're making fun of it. I'm very happy. Same, someone said. I didn't get it was a joke until I read this. Hit him with a big, are you sure you aren't autistic and just a little normal? <laughs> oh my God, this is beautiful. I love this. I love this so much. I'm having so much fun. These dumb kids watch TikToks of holistic fakers and decide they need to pretend in order to get attention. It will be sad if it weren't offensive seeing them act so hard like they enjoy eye contact and can magically read people's minds by looking at their faces. Some people are actually struggling with refraining from such activities delusions. I can't believe people are okay with just trivializing that. So obviously they're just switching around the words that people would say if somebody announced they had self-diagnosed as autistic. Besides, everyone is a little holistic. You're not special. You can stand loud noises. I don't believe you. It's not real unless you're literally deaf. You're just saying that for attention. You think being holistic is so cool and unique without any consideration for those of us who suffer from that disorder. Also, my little cousin is holistic and he's nothing like you. <laughs> this is so good. I'm absolutely dying. I feel the need to come clean here. I used to be self-diagnosed as holistic. I've decided though that until I'm officially diagnosed as such, I will no longer say or even imply that I'm holistic. <laughs> Someone says, here goes, I've been faking being neurotypical for basically my whole life, pretending to be holistic, just because I thought it would make me a cool kid. <laughs> so true. Copying all my so-called friends, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was me too. <laughs> We should all be very ashamed of our transgressions. <laughs> Thank you for that, everybody who, who pitched in on that one. You made me giggle. Should we do one more? I think we should do one more. Cross post for evil internet points. Self-diagnosis is valid. I'm not getting diagnosed because I don't want to get discriminated against. The government can't know my secrets. It, it does kind of feel like that. I definitely struggle with not knowing whether or not I wanted a diagnosis on my record and just feeling fearful of a whole bunch of things that could probably never happen, but it's got kind of conspiracy theory in my head for a bit there I was like hopefully it's uh, all very far-fetched <laughs> someone said peer diagnosis and someone says no but seriously at this point it's been like one or two dozen fellow autists just telling me I seem autistic I can't really refute that I feel yeah I don't, I don't think you can <laughs> somebody said do I identify as having a disability as defined by the Equality Act 2010 I identify as someone who likes to mind his own business <laughs> and someone said now when I'm getting diagnosed so I can get paid to be autistic <laughs> Does that mean in terms of like disability benefits or something? Oh my gosh, you earn that money if you if you do go down that route for sure. It sounds like uh, they make it really hard work for people. I might take off the horns now. I'm gonna leave the evil and let my, my poor little head recover. I remember occasionally having the bright idea to wear headbands at school that were like this with like hard plastic and it was really bad, really bad was my scalp. It's like super sensitive. Oh my God, I feel so wrong without them. If you want to laugh at some more autism awareness, then I will leave on screen my reacting to problematic and cringe autism mom memes on screen. Help me decode them because some of them make no sense and some of them made my eyes bleed in the same way that Carla did. So if you want more bleeding eyes, go over there. A lot of people who watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel, trying not to feel the rejection sensitivity dysphoria. So if you did like it, I wouldn't be mad if you subscribed. That's all I'm gonna say.